Hello, it's Ozymandias12 and I'm back after a bit of a hiatus. Um, I am compelled to give you this video based on the top five most overrated directors. Uh, some are living, some aren't these days, but um, after watching a certain film by one of these directors I'm about to mention, I just, I just couldn't handle it anymore. I can't take it when people praise these people who are just simply mediocre. Um, I think we're celebrating a bit too much mediocrity in our films these days, which has resulted in a lot of meh films. A lot of, they're good, but they're not great. Um, I want to see more great films, so I've decided to compile a list of what I think is the top five most overrated directors possibly ever. Now let's start off with number five. Now a lot of people won't agree with me, but Paul Thomas Anderson sits at number five. Um, yes, very overrated director. He has done one great film, There Will Be Blood. I will not blemish that one. That is magnificent. It's a, it's a masterpiece. But everything else that he's done is pretty disappointing, pretty boring, and ultimately, I wouldn't say great films. Uh, not even good films, some of them. Um, the Master is something that really disappointed me. I was very excited for that film. It looked great. It has, and it does have great performances, um, little moments that are all right. But together, it just doesn't mesh well. It's it's boring. It's a film that is you don't know where it's going. He doesn't know where it's going. It doesn't really end up anywhere, and you just kind of sit there going, "No, I don't. I don't really like this." Uh, same thing with Boogie Nights. It's got a lot of good ideas. It does have really great moments and some really good scenes, but as a film, it doesn't mesh well. He goes into certain directions, and he comes back and. It's maybe it has a good look. It's more like a documentary that can kind of take a look at that time period or that kind of subject. But as a film, which really kind of gets me, um, I, I don't see it as being great. Uh, it's quite mediocre in my uh, opinion. Punch Rock Love is a lot better than most of his films. Um, I wouldn't quite put it as magnificent. But yeah, that's a recurring theme with this guy is that he has a lot of films that kind of look like they're good. Um, if you think you're a cinephile, you will get points by saying you love Paul Thomas Anderson. Me personally, I'm like to shoot straight. I don't think he's that great. Magnolia was another one that has all the um, yearnings of a talented genius filmmaker, but really isn't. You know, you got Tom Cruise doing a great performance. He gets good performances, um, but in terms of his films, they're not quite up to snuff and I think everyone's kind of getting to an exhaustion level with inherent bias where no one really praised everyone's kind of going like yeah yeah okay he does those kinds of films he's not testing us as an audience number four possibly the worst thing to happen to the 21st century in terms of comedy especially with films Judd Apatow this guy is he's not good he's got no talent whatsoever I don't even know how he got to where he is he did 40 year old virgin which isn't bad but I would give more credit to Steve Carell than the actual film then he did Knocked Up which everyone loved for some reason I don't know why they loved it I don't know why Seth Rogen is a big um, actor he really isn't that talented I think there's a bit of camaraderie and you think like you're having a good time with him but really he is not anyway Judd Apatow this is 40 um, funny people I'm just reading Trainwreck this guy was celebrated as one of the, uh, no, he was just, he was called one of the great comedic directors of all time. And he's produced all these other ones like Super Bad and Pineapple Express, which are all just as bad. Like he's just ushered in this whole era of um, the comedy is like, I say this funny thing and I compare it to something else funny. And that's the joke. He, he brought that in, which is now mainstream um, kind of humor in any format you see. I don't know why it got so popular. But um, I'm blaming that guy. Uh, very overrated. Almost just a curse to the film industry and especially comedies. Like I love um, Dumb and Dumber, you know, uh, Anchorman. I even though he had something to do with Anchorman, I don't think he had a whole lot. I like Jim Carrey comedies back in the day, which really stand the test of the time. None of what he's done has had any influence and in anything that's kind of come out of what he's done has been terrible. Anyway, Jada Patel, number four. Number three, I'll go over quickly, Terence Malick. Now this guy is the beacon of hope for all pretentiousness. Um, 
I don't know why I watched these films. I don't know why I took the time to get through them. Um, Tree of Life, Knight of Cups, uh, something else. Uh, it did new the New World, which is one with Colin Farrell, which uh, it's just boring. They just they look beautiful. The guy can. I think he's a more he's a photographer. He's not a filmmaker, and uh, you know he's got some great moving images. But I don't go and watch films to see slideshows of screensavers. You know I go there to feel something, to experience something. He doesn't bring any of that um, to me, uh, and I'm, I, I really it's just boredom. It's just pretentiousness and boredom, and you'll be more angry at the screen than you will be enlightened by it. Um, Terence Malick, very overrated. I did kind of like The Thin Red Line. I think that's when he was a bit younger. Maybe he had a bit of an idea of what he was doing back then, but these days he's just uh, throwing the camera around. We're walking around with him. I think what he's best at is knowing that if he shoots this thing, people will think he's smart. And he'll get some fans that way. But for anyone else, they'll kind of say, we know you don't know what you're doing. Just put the camera down. Number two, now this is the reason why I compiled this list, um, Edgar Wright. Uh, his recent film Baby Driver just came out and I, everyone's praising it and praising it and I'm really looking there going, this is another meh film. This is just, it's good but it's not great and we've got to really encourage great filmmakers and Edgar Wright is far from being a great filmmaker. He has never done one great film. You look at all his films, they are flashy, they are vibrant, they've got a lot of glamour and technically they look really cool. There's a lot to like in those kinds of respects, but him as a filmmaker, his films, they don't hold up. They are hollow. They look really good. It's style over substance. There is no meat to the, to the sandwich with these things. Um, I think, uh, and I think a lot of the his talents of being a technical filmmaker should be attributed to Bill Pope, a frequent the director of photography that he uses, who is basically one of the best um, cinematographers out there. He does, um, Every film he's done is visually magnificent, like The Matrix, uh, Spider-Man 2, Team America. Um, he's fantastic in building on those kinds of shots where you really just sit back and go, oh, how did they do that? So as much as people think Edgar Wright's this great technical uh, person, I think maybe it's Bill Pope. That's just a suspicion I have. But anyway, Edgar Wright, you know, he did Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, which looks like a, a brought to life anime. And you know, I wanted to like it, but there is just nothing that I do like. I don't connect with Scott Pilgrim. I don't connect with the girl he likes. He doesn't know how to make you relate to the characters, um, or even co create a story that is somewhat interesting. So, and his Cornetto trilogy is the same thing. I think the only pe reason people jumped on his train is because you know, Shaun of the Dead was quite original when it first came out. But nowadays, like, it's really quite boring. It's it's really not that great an idea. I don't think he's really that funny with his humor. I think it has the appearance of humor. I don't think it really makes me laugh. If it, anything, it's a one breath laughter kind of thing, which isn't enough for me. I want to be laughing hard. And uh, it's more like, <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, Edgar Wright, very overrated. And last but not least, the number one overrated director. I know I'm gonna win a lot of fans with this one, but I honestly believe it, Stanley Kubrick. Now this man is not the greatest director that ever lived and that will ever be. He made one good film, The Shining. Every film he's made has been based on a book and The Shining is his best um, adaptation and it, it's a really good film. I will not put that film down, but everything else has been celebrated as like it created the fundamentals of what we think cinema is today and that's just not the case. I think he is a very innovative filmmaker. You know, 2001, a Space Odyssey was a film at, at that time which would have been amazing. But you look at it now, it is a little pretentious. It's, uh, you know, it was based on the Philip K. Dick book, I think. Um, and, you know, like the idea of using kind of uh, classical music in space works very well. But in terms of an actual film that I want to revisit every now and then, not really. I, I do think that it is a bit empty. It, you know, it is another one of almost talent, Terrence Malick kind of visuals, which look great, but doesn't really get to you as a, a person, as an audience. And the same with Clockwork Orange. I think at the time people thought it was this crazy, bizarre comment on life and uh, such a surreal, um, intelligent film, but not really. It's, it's really quite generic. 
and compared to the other films that came in that same year, um, I don't think it holds up. I think he's just one of those guys that people just talk about um, to sound smart because you know if you're in the film world you say Stanley Kubrick oh, okay. oh he knows what he's talking about he knows Stanley Kubrick and that's all I can do is like look at his body of work and say does that relate to me now does that relate to other people does it transcend time no I don't think it does people forget about a lot of this his name stands up ahead of a lot of other people because of maybe his technical brilliance back in the day but in terms of his films I don't think they hold up except for The Shining it's the only one I will watch time and time again. The other ones, quite frankly, I find myself getting a little bored. So there it is, my top five um, most overrated directors. Um, I know a lot of people are probably going to disagree with me, but I legitimately think that these people um, should not be praised as much as they have been. Uh, and that is purely in the name of getting better films out there and really paying attention to what is good and uh, not to you know some of these superficial kind of films anyway my name's Ozymandias12 um, yeah comment if you can if you want and uh, I got a twitter but I can't figure it out Ozymandias12 anyway that's it I got it off my chest I feel a lot better now